Three, two, one. Go. Uh, surprise, it's us. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I don't know what to call you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lopes. Yeah. Uh, ben. Grade, grade eight social <laughs> yeah. studies teacher, Mr. That's Lopes. So crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What did you say when he asked you to come on the show? I well, first he's like something like, "Hey, like we were your students at St. Rose." <laughs> and and honestly, uh, my immediate feeling was like what I was saying to Tom. <laughs> he just called him Tom. <laughs> no, that's all good. <laughs> We're just going, no, it's not all good. We talked. We, we did talk. Not yeah, all but good. see, see you, but you called me Tom from the start, <laughs> which kind of, if I've never known it any yeah. other way, that's okay. Yeah. There's a lot of specific rules <laughs> yeah. about that, this. That could so. be a, that could be a really great fitting into my brain. We talk, and it's like, yeah, yeah no, like go. it's not Tom. It's not Tom. And you're like, great, Tom, <laughs> Tom. I Sorry, got... it's too loud. <laughs> I got... <laughs> Sounds good. We'll Tom. adjust the levels later. Yeah, we'll yeah. fix that. But <laughs> so, so basically, yeah, I, th- I think uh, Thomas was like, "Yeah, we we were your students," and, and for me, my I, my heart was hyped because because that time in my life, I mean, you got to think like that time that I was doing that with you guys. That was my final practicum. Mm-hmm. That was my final two months of four years of effort. Oh boy. And right, so for yep. me in my world, and then I was I was just going to get married after that. So like that yep. was literally the last metaphorical uh, boat trip you were on before you were docking onto the next part of your life. Mm-hmm. So so for hmm. me it was a really uh, there is only what 120 kids in the universe. That that can go. Yep, we remember Mr. Lowe. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So there's for sure. there's sort of this uh, sort of kindred feeling when yeah, you're like, yeah. right? And I've actually you if you've got questions for me, I got questions for you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, like yeah. like uh, I was I was wondering, uh, like I know how it felt from my end. Yeah. But like now, were you guys my my home group class? No, or? it was social studies. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. social. Eight? eight, eight, yeah, that yeah. would been great. Did did we do the throwing paper airplanes, or was Not that that I recall? <sighs> that was no, I don't think so. Okay, we did but I remember it. we so had what to. What do you remember? Tell we, me. We we had to write. Okay, so the first thing I remember was uh, you come in and you know Mr. Ploof was like, "Okay, guys, we got this new student teacher. He's kind of nervous." Uh, <laughs> you new guys, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> so he was kind of nervous. <laughs> Uh, you know, be uh, be nice to him, and then you come in with these <laughs> flashcards, and you're like shaking, like th- for those Holy people watching, like this, holding <laughs> flashcards, and he's like, "Today we're gonna be talking about Brazil," and then drops them all <laughs> over the floor, and then you know everyone's kind of like we're not openly laughing because it's so awkward. Yeah, you're but- like is going yeah. on <laughs> and then you know one of the kids in the class actually piped up and he was like come on guys go easy on yeah. them and you kind of turned around and were like pretend crying <laughs> oh, no. and then you turn around laughing and you're like okay who did i okay. get with that that's right so, so this was my goal with that right yeah. i was like i don't know it's just the way my brain works like let's let's trick them all yeah that would yeah. be hilarious yeah. um but but i so from my perspective i remember thinking i want to own it so hard that it goes past for sure he's joking to <laughs> like, this, 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 is this is real. Is real. Yeah. And I remember when it happened, right? Cause I went the, fr- and the first thing I did, and I thought it'd just be the funniest thing. I waited for the clock to tick right noon. I don't know. You guys wouldn't remember that, but I waited. And the moment it went, I took a, a pen cap off and I literally just scribbled on the board like this and went, hello everyone. My name is Mr. Lotes. And if you looked on the board, it was just a <laughs> scribble. <laughs> and, um, I rem- and I told I told uh, Mr. Ploof to come up, right? I'm like, yeah. dude, when oh, I yeah. drop those, like, when I drop them, I remember like hearing Snickers and stuff, <laughs> right? And when you're being like that, because it's so unbelievable. Kids but, are brutal dude, too, man. But but I just I'm like I'm gonna own it. So then I when I stood back up, I remember shaking the hands, and that kid was like, "Come on, guys!" And I was like, "Oh, I've got them." And I remember, and I've told this story like a hundred <laughs> times. I'm so hyped it was you guys. It's one yeah, of my favorite awesome. stories. So I remember as I was shaking there, I was like, oh. and I purposefully looked up like this, and I wanted to make eye contact with you poor young kids. And I remember <laughs> the
the whole atmosphere shifted in the room where it was like, oh my God, this is, this is a train wreck. <laughs> like you just had empathy from 35 grade eighters. Yeah. But more than that, I remember looking at a kid <laughs> and he couldn't make eye contact with me. <laughs> like it was such a horrible train wreck. Like, right? Like, like I, I do not yeah. want to be associated. Ooh, no eye contact. Like, and yeah. I remember I looked at him and he was just like, <laughs> and so it was that moment yeah. the room was just dead silent i remember yeah i was like i'm just joking guys and the class was like what that's awesome i'm so stoked that yeah. was you guys so you didn't do that for every you were the last class i taught yeah. no way yeah oh wow yeah no it was that's just your class uh, wow and then word spread yeah yeah throughout the oh, school that Mr. was awesome mr yeah. Lotes. i remember yeah. that now that you said that yeah that's yeah. like the f i don't know why i'll always because i remember the like awkwardness of that moment just sitting there like we're gonna have to do this for like eight weeks because <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. And I think it hit closer to home because before that we had had a student teacher in Mrs. Thompson's English class who was like borderline that awkward and brutal. And it was just, he just, we're stand up comedy fans. He just like bombed the whole, <laughs> his bombed whole, the class. bombed the whole teaching, bombed student teaching. Four <laughs> years. Yeah. And I'm like, so I'm like, oh no, like coming to junior high is shitty enough. And now I have to <laughs> gotta endure this train wreck <laughs> oh, of a human. Yeah. God. yeah. Oh, so, oh man. man. So, that was awesome. So why didn't you go through with it? Yeah. No, really great question. So you know what guys, like it's really interesting. I came in late, right? Mm. In Spruce Grove, there was a strike. And so I actually came in like three or three weeks late into my practicum. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm oh. I, I was, hmm. yeah. Okay. And so I was behind. Um, and, uh, usually you feel to catch up and stuff mm -hmm. like okay well better catch up and i remember <laughs> i just feeling loose as a goose i and at that point i still felt okay i'm gonna be a school teacher mm -hmm. but the, but there was this thing that started happening in my fourth year um and the whole reason i actually went to post-secondary was was because my dad who is a, a great man but he uh he's manic depressive and bipolar so you oh. you get some rough moments is a really mm. easy way to say it right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when i was 18 he screamed at me for three hours because i was gonna go do skateboarding ministry and he said you're going to post-secondary you're not coming home and so for whatever reason i felt there was something worth honoring in there you you, you learn to look past the screaming yeah and yeah hear the heart for sure and so that's why i went into post-secondary mm -hmm. and that's what and i remember literally the next day i was like <laughs> i go to my grade counselor in grade 12 so gonna do post-secondary he's like you know what ben you'd be a great teacher and i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> called my mom mom i'm gonna be a teacher she's like oh i knew it Bobby. <laughs> i'm yeah. like okay cool <laughs> you know so yeah. so for me i committed to it like you did for accounting mm -hmm. and, and by that fourth year um by that time what what uh what i felt there was a narrative being fed to me which didn't work for me. Mm. Other people are teachers, they're meant for it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what people kept saying to me is, listen, once you get that teaching, like once you are out, do whatever you can for your teaching certificate. I don't care if you need to sell drugs. I don't care. Like it, like it, yeah. that's the way yeah. it felt, right? Like right, if you've right. got, if you got to go 12 hours away and you're teaching 12 kids for six years, just get your certificate. And, and the other part of the narrative that uh it's how it felt though like you hear it from everybody you hear yeah. it from professors from yeah. people that are just into it and for me this this narrative which is you've worked this hard for four years now sell yourself for uh comfort mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sell yeah. yourself for that pension yeah sell yourself for you know and, and and i just i couldn't accept it yeah so actually by the time i taught you guys i was, I was about to get married um I wasn't, I wasn't, I hadn't fully accepted that that wasn't going to be my trajectory, yeah. but, but definitely one foot was mm -hmm. already out the door. So yeah. I really did. How old were you? I was 22. Okay. Yeah, actually. Yes, I was 22. Wow. Yeah. So, um, I, I already knew it may not be for me. And so I, I really did feel loose as a goose. I remember, so at your school sitting around, <laughs> you know, with the facilitator, he was this older guy that would come in. Mm. And uh, we all, us 12 
student teachers at the mm. school at the time, we all sit in a room. <clears throat> yeah. You can feel the nervous energy, like, okay, like this is the guy that's going to pass me. So it's like, all right, let's do percentage progress reports. Uh, where are you at in workload? And be like, oh, I'm at like a solid 62 right now. You know, and I'm, I've am i been doing this and this and this. And right. I don't know what it was, but, you know, even just what I did with you guys, I felt loose as a goose. I was already three weeks late. Mm-hmm. Mark Plouffe was so chill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and his style was so perfect for me that he didn't he didn't push me, but he gave me room to be myself. So I remember, goes around the corner, 62%. I'm at 73, and it's sort of this one-upping me, <laughs> one me, totally. Yeah. And it gets to me, and I don't know what it was, but I'm like, literally... I'm pushing a heavy 14, Bill. <laughs> and uh, and honestly, and Bill's like, <laughs> that's so funny, Ben. All right, Margaret, where are you at? <laughs> right? Yeah, and it's like, yeah. and the only times Bill ever came in to watch me, it's like the mercy of God in my life. Anytime he came in, it was like the, the lesson where I'm writing songs about social and yeah. you guys are, and I'm playing it for you. Yep. Or I'm doing some, it, those are when he came in. So he was always so hyped right so i i had this wonderful pocket to to not have to strive but just well and just just have a good time yeah and and mark but i'll tell you guys and you would appreciate to hear this Mm -hmm. i think i actually told you guys this once i did it may not have been your class i was literally one page ahead of you in everything you were learning (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i'm not even joking and i think i actually one of the classes was tough yeah. oh that's right i don't know if it was your class one of the classes was tough and one of the talky kids i was like well well you know and this is what happened and i was like oh i'm not sure and the kid's like don't you know mr Lotz?" and i was like no <laughs> i literally just read this 14 hours ago and it's amazing when you just level with kids they were all like fair wow yeah, yeah. i'm never gonna read yeah. it yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly wow yeah so so all that to say all that to say um that narrative of uh, i remember sitting in a class guys in one of my teaching classes and people are saying why do you want to be a teacher why do you want to be a teacher so people are giving this reason and and uh this one guy's like safety and comfort i, I want to know that my future is locked in. Mm-hmm. And and I remember, and again, some people are built that way. God bless them. And I really do mean that. Mm-hmm. I am not. Yeah. Right? So when he said that in my world, I'm like, but you're teaching for yourself. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Is, is this about the kids or is this about you wanting a, a secure, stable job? Check right? and pension. Right? And, that, so, and I could hear that in my brain, right? Mm-hmm. So So that was being, I felt sold to me and I couldn't accept it. Hmm. It just wasn't in me, right? Like for me, it felt like, okay, get your certificate, teach for 30 years, get your pension, die. That's really like, and honestly, for me, that's how it felt. Like, like it, it's depressing for me to know 30 years is planned for me. Hmm. It, yeah. It's it's not, it's not in me that right. way. Right. So, so when I finished, when I finished my degree, I remember, I finished guys with flying colors. That old, that older dude lit- yeah. literally wrote in my evaluation, "I wish you could teach my grandchildren." Wow! Wow! Um, they they invited me as the only student teacher to speak to be the speaker at the whole Edmonton public and Edmonton Catholic <laughs> gathering of principals at that old Royal Glenora thing. Right, like, right, like right. every person that would ever hire you, I was who they chose and I did a I for the principal of St. Rose I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember at the time I did a parody to everything I do I do it for you <laughs> I played the piano and I don't remember his name but I like was so, it male principal or female it was a male principal Kovacs was it Kovacs yeah, then I think yeah. it was so okay, you know, yeah. like I wrote wrote the dude a song <laughs> and uh, so yeah. right so it's like like finished with flying colors doors are open i had principals coming up to me and just being like listen if you need so all those doors were wide open yeah Um, absolutely but i i remember specifically i finished my degree got married and i went to pick up my sister in june at the high school and i remember when i walked into the high school just this feeling that my skin was crawling Hmm. like i just at the thought that this is my future Hmm. 
I, I don't know how to describe it, but it felt like my skin was crawling. Like, I'm not meant to be here. Hmm. I'd walk hmm. by classrooms on the way to go and pick her up and see the teachers in there. And for, for three and a half years, almost rightfully so, my reality was that will be me. Yeah. And you're cool with it because that's what you're working towards. But now that it's done, I don't want this. Hmm. This isn't mine. And, um, and so that started... Uh, <laughs> What do you do from that point, right? Yeah, no yeah. yeah. Um, That's pretty bonkers too, because I think I've had a ton of student teachers. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I couldn't tell you any of their names, man. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, like that actually yeah. makes me want to cry. To be honest with you, like that <laughs> that uh, that means so much, boys. And yeah. you know, it's like you know, even in real estate, like a, a career is actually never meant to define you. Like, I think that's so rad mm-hmm. that while I was student teaching, because I put my whole heart into it. Mm-hmm. That 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 stood out, and it had, it wasn't the teaching. No, you, you idiots not, don't remember a single thing. Not, not I a taught. single thing you taught us, but <laughs> just what we were doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right. Like that. That actually it, it means so much. And and really, after that point, that was my posture. Mm-hmm. No matter what, I put my heart into. Mm-hmm. Right. So from that point, I got into, I, I did stone work for two years. Basically I, had, oh, okay. I yeah. had to come out of the closet to my wife's family. Like think of that. Hey, and the, you know, they're wonderful and yeah. they're EAs and life right. is steady. And I actually love how steady they are. I'm not. <laughs> and so like, they're like, you know, grandma, mm-hmm. love you, grandma. If you ever watch this Maxine. So did you get a teaching job? Did you put some resumes out? I can't lie. Mm-hmm. So I actually put some of the worst resumes out. Just so I could say I did put resumes <laughs> out, Grandma. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I actually remember putting at the bottom of the resume because even I hate resumes. I'm, I do. <laughs> Please don't hire me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I put things that make me a real person. Like I actually added the category. Yeah, Seinfeld. Seinfeld season two. <laughs> Seinfeld season five. I bet any principal would have looked at that and been like. Die. this guy doesn't want a job but i didn't want to lie <laughs> yeah. to grandma right right but, but it was at the it was it was uh it was actually a lot of pressure when you think of it you just married the love of your life yeah <clears throat> you know surprise i'm a loser i I married your daughter and she's screwed <laughs> um but i did actually have to come out in the summer and be like i'm not gonna be a teacher hmm. right you know right. so yeah so so you just kind of got like a job to yeah. do something in the yeah. meantime more or less yeah like in my life and you guys already know this but my life is very faith-based it's mm-hmm. like god leads me and mm-hmm. i believe i hear god and then i i'm dumb enough to just do what i think i hear like it's really actually very simple yeah. i thought i Fair thought enough. i heard this and the only way i find out if it works is if i try hmm. and then i tried right so for me i didn't know what i was going to do but i trusted that if this wasn't it there had to be something. Yeah. It was never, real estate was never, and I'll say it one more time, never a thought of something yeah. I would ever do. Hmm. And um, so I started, my friend was doing stonework. Yeah. And offered me a job. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Hauled mud for a year. He bought us lunch every day. He was 19 years old, owned his own business bought me lunch i came from a impoverished family of 10 i'm like free lunch heck yeah yeah wow jeez yeah. yeah so did that for a couple of years and then uh got into sales selling angel pins and giftware yeah for seven years and that taught me sort of the, the like if you sell a thousand bucks of angel pins you get a hundred bucks for your family to live and i'd sell right. stores across the country or across the province and that taught me psycho fundamental business principles when you have to sit in a small room smaller than this with sharon from sharon's gifts and gadgets <laughs> actually that sharon i do love you shout she's out she's from spruce grove shout out shout gifts out. and gadgets spruce grove sharon you're one of my first i love you <laughs> she is the best if she she'll laugh if she hears this love you sharon <laughs> but like but when you gotta when, when you know nothing about sales mm-hmm. and you have to walk into this place and then sit in a room with sharon face to face and somehow by the end not by manipulating or being sleazy because it's not in me Mm -hmm. sell scarves and enough to feed your family (laughs) you do that for seven years straight traveling the province you you learn some stuff i guess yeah 
you know? <laughs> yeah, I could imagine <laughs> for sure. So yeah. Make things work. Did that for seven years, a door opened for real estate that I never thought would have been open. And I jumped on it just like, you know, that gut feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, really? Uh, yeah, for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. So it was kind of like a happenstance more or less kind of offering yeah. or something or uh, did anyone ever tell you oh ben you should be a real estate agent no or? you know what to say like i had grown in sales yeah. within that career for seven years to the point that i was the top selling sales rep within the third largest agency in canada so if you think of a gift store tin box on white ave mm-hmm. right. right like i actually had a huge line called lenny and eva i was a sales rep right so they had their thing in the window and they bought a ton of my stuff so i, I became the best selling rep <clears throat> or the third largest agency that had 25 brands under its belt. So I had learned in seven years how to do sales. Again, though, I I was good with it. Like, well, we'll just keep doing this. Although I do remember by the seventh year feeling quite bored. And that's that, that's that thing. That's sort of that entrepreneurial thing where yeah. you're like, it's never really about money because mm-hmm. we really had no money <laughs> for right, like right. 10 years. My poor wife. Uh, you know, for me, it was growing incrementally. So I'm like, yeah, and she's like, we're dying, (laughs) you know, but for, for me, the small increments were like, I had a magnify, I'm like, but, but it means it's growing. Right. So if I don't stop, it should grow more. Yeah. (laughs) Jenna, I love you. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> so so by the end of that seven years by no means were we crushing it we had a little bungalow and we were finally able to like you know i was able to semi-consistently pull in 4500 in a month sure selling gift or which is you're selling fifty thousand dollars worth of product mm-hmm. across the province every month <clears throat> and i i'd gotten to that point and i was happy i was happy enough um but then we kept procreating and our house was too small and, and so we needed to, to have a bigger house. And basically, as we were selling our house, uh, the guy that sold my parent that helped us get into that house, I'm sitting at the table with him, Harold Vasliff. Shout, shout out, shout out, Harold Vasliff. Love you, Harold. Lots of shout outs. Harold, love you. Sharon, Sharon and Harold. <laughs> Spruce Grove for life. SG. Um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great community. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't even take a drink of water. I took the lid off and put it back. Um, so Harold was talking while we were sitting at the dinner table. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was saying, yeah, I've been doing this with my son. And Harold had crushed it for 40 years. Right. Um, and he said, you know, I'm doing this with my son, but my son's, my son's not feeling it. Mm-hmm. So my son's going to get out of it. And again, like I come by life pretty honestly. I'm like, oh, cool. And in that moment, for me, it's like a whisper in your guts and i just i just heard that spot's for you and honestly it was so outlandish for me but i for me i'm in tune to that voice um so i just sat on it because i'm like real estate are you kidding me like my dumb face on a dumb bench like i remember <laughs> driving around a year before i ever got into it ever thought and literally being like look at these people with their faces on benches jenna this one has a red stripe and a face i don't remember this one has a blue stripe in a face I don't... And they're spending money on it. Like, yeah. I remember saying that. So, like, th- this is what I want to get into, right? So, yeah, it, was so yeah. it was so bizarre that I just sat on it for yeah. a week. But I know the voice. So, I just let it sit there. And a week later, me and Jenna are sitting in the basement. The kids are asleep. And I'm just like, Jenna, this is so wild. But I, I feel like God's telling me to get into real estate. And she starts crying immediately like zero to 60 tears and i'm like what's up and she's like that is so crazy because i've seen your face on a bus bench for the last week in my mind (laughs) and so i mean for for us in our life again i come by life honestly that is such a gorgeous green light confirmation of hearing Mm -hmm. for sure i'm 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 easy forward right at that point there's no question it doesn't matter what's going to come that is a perfect confirmation Hmm. and so uh from that point i talked to harold the next day uh and said hey you know you know your son's getting out of it uh you uh me do can i (laughs) i don't know how to say this and he's like you want to get into real estate and uh i'm like yeah (laughs) 
And as a as a weathered forty year old veteran, like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, right? Like, you guys know. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, we're weathered 26-year-old yeah. veterans. <laughs> That's, right. Yeah. That's right. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and and basically, you know, so he went home, thought about it, prayed about it, and he came back a couple of days later said, okay, I'll mentor you. I'll bring you into it. So um, at that time, I was teaching music. I was still full sales repping uh, and then doing online schooling with three kids, and we had just bought our next house. And so just up at night till 11, falling asleep, uh, fundamentals, <laughs> shut yeah. up shut up fundamentals of real estate back yeah. when it was uh that i think it still is actually but the freaking videos you can't skip <laughs> through <laughs> was the unskippable videos yes. oh man <laughs> oh <laughs> i mean i mean sorry i mean i Rika. love them we yeah, love you i love them and Rika, i watched I, every uh, minute of them Rika is the greatest I, uh, thing ever uh Thank and all you. their courses are amazing i learned so much shout out sharon harold sg Rika. We'll keep a list at the end. <laughs> Selling out with Ben Lowe. <laughs> yeah. Start naming my previous skate sponsors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get into that for a minute. Sure, too. totally. Because yeah. you used to be a professional skateboarder. Yeah. Probably still are. I, I, you I still skateboard, I, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I, I still skate for sure. I mean, uh, <clears throat> yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. You're sponsored, you want, by, you want, you you're want, sponsored by some decent brands, yeah. too. Like, yeah. So at the time. Yeah. Uh, when I was rolling with you guys, uh, I was on Circa Canada, and Circa Footwear was like oh, big, big yeah. pre- wow, yeah, premier big, brand, right? Big company. Yeah. Uh, and and I had actually ridden for Circa uh, for ten years, which was just a dream come true. So from from literally eighteen years old to twenty eight years old, uh, cert- like and direct, not through no offense to anybody, but not through a skate shop where it's flow and you're going through sure. the rep. I went straight to Dominique in Vancouver. And man, like guys, it was like a freaking dream come true for, especially for a kid that like had nothing mm-hmm. and grew up in a big family. Like, like I got to go online and just pick boxes of product, $700 worth of product every month. That's bonkers. And, just, wow. and then I still remember actually, Bob from UPS, cause he would drive out to our acreage. He actually services where we live in Spruce now. Oh, so yeah. Bob is my bro. Like, like he still remembers. I remember when I'd see a UPS cause you know, you put the, you know, I'd put, put it in and know it's on its way. Mm-hmm. I'd see a UPS truck in like Spruce and, and start following that. I'm like, I know it's going out to the acreage. <laughs> right, so like, yeah, so that was six. Circa was sick. Obviously all of skateboard yeah. sponsored me since I was 16. Shout out Randy Jesperson, Spruce Grove, all of skateboards, Sharon, <laughs> Sharon, Gifts and Gadgets, Harold Vasilev, SG, Rika. <laughs> um, so yeah, awesome. You're amazing so with did, names. Huh? Yeah, you're good with that. Did you, uh, did you ever try and do like the, I don't know, like do tour X yeah, yeah, Games or whatever sure. else was relevant at the time? Great question. I actually haven't been able to talk about this stuff for a long time. And, yeah. uh, and for me, it's actually super, super... I'm I'm so geeky, passionate about yeah. skateboarding. Like it is like. Why haven't you been able to talk about it? Just well, no, you're, you're just not able to. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, like it's not like you go to your clients. Yeah. You're like, hey, I'm Ben. Oh, I used to skateboard yeah, have you ever a heard lot. Of circa, <laughs> you know, like it's like nobody cares. Why should I hire you to sell yeah. my house? Yeah. Well, I used to. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah. Have you heard of a kickflip? <laughs> yeah. All right. Where well, do you want to I'll go show sign? you right now. Yeah. <laughs> I could that's pop right. shove it off of this staircase yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. So, you know what? For me, it, like, I don't know if you guys have heard of Street League or, or the, it, these are contests going on that actually lead to the Olympics. It's the most <clears> elite <throat> skaters. But I, I, I got to, and I, with, with all humility, because there's, once you head into that higher realm, you immediately see how not good you are, right? So I say this with all yeah, humility. It's yeah. like an honor that I got to compete in that category. Yeah. Um, but like, the dudes are so good. Oh yeah. Um, but you learn. You learn when you're up there. You learn that it's not about who's the best. Everybody actually has their own thing, right? At that point, you've all chosen sort of the tricks you like and the selections you like. So this guy does this. You can't do that. But guess what? 80 other people can't do that. They all are bummed they're not that. But the this guy does this, and mm. nobody can do that, right? So it was never – I don't know how to describe that, but but uh, I skated – a joy for me was I, I got to go skate in Tampa Am. And Tampa Am, for anybody that doesn't know, that on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 
three, it was literally a level. That, really? Like, yeah. Oh, okay. It was like Tampa. The, the contest. It was the. It's the premier, greatest am skaters in the world that are invite only, to go and skate in wow. that contest. And so. And that's in Tampa, Florida. That's in Tampa, Florida, right? Yeah. So the level was Tampa. Okay. And then I in maybe the, if I saw it, I'd remember. Yeah, sure. and in the, in the game, so the level is Tampa, and then in that level, you have to get to Tampa M, and you have to accomplish these tasks. So I grew up watching on four one one video magazine and everything like that. Tampa, Tampa, mm-hmm. Tampa. So when I was nineteen, I went to Vancouver to skate in a qualifier. So they would do Dam M all around the states and like two in Canada Hmm. and so drove to Vancouver with my wife and Keith Henry uh, who was a photographer and uh, I got ninth which was like like I was hyped and it was the top 10 were invited to Tampa okay yeah right so I got I got to be invited to Tampa or no and I wasn't I was 24 I was 24 at the time not 19 and so I went I went and skated that con so surreal um, but honestly, the feeling when you go there, because like you rip here and you're like, yeah, like I'm pretty good. And <laughs> but when you get amongst the I, I kid elite. you not. Yeah. yeah. I kid you not. I <laughs> The contrast, stark contrast of like hometown hero that like you're there and you're like, man, it's Ben Lotz. Like you go to a park and it's Ben Lotz. I get to Tampa and I'm at the top of this iconic roll-in that I've seen for 10 years in videos, the roll-in. I'm standing at it. This dude beside me drops in and three flips over this table. Here at home, you'd see like two people do that and it would take them like an hour. He does it first trying his back leg is like dangling over here. Like it's just like not even trying. Like it's just like, and so you're like, oh. And then like the next guy goes and does a backside flip and you're like, oh. So I remember Jenna came with me. <laughs> Jenna came with me and I stood up there and dudes just go, Dude's just like, if you're not confident, <clears throat> you're going to miss out. Because wow. there's like the hungriest ams yeah. in the world who are who are so good. And I, st- I stood up there for like 12 minutes and didn't go. And and I remember Jenna's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, are you going to skate? Right? What a contrast. Yeah. From like hometown yeah. dude to like. And uh, so I had to force myself to skate. So that that alone was just such a cool thing and i totally yeah well totally duffed my run and yeah how'd you do i got 40th out of 80 and i like landed half of my tricks and i think at one point the the announcer was like yeah there's that ben loads team player team player ben loads and i'm like <laughs> team player what is what, they, what does that even mean in that I, i'm really not sure but i think it was after i missed a really simple grind yeah they were like nah that poor guy well, he's a team player. <laughs> good, good, you know, good guy. In yeah. an individual, individual sport. sport. <laughs> yeah. Great team player. So, you know, that was super cool. Uh, you know, honestly, guys, I'd have to say one of, one of my absolute personal highlights that uh, literally brought me to tears was, um, I think, four years ago, that feast contest came out to Edmonton. Oh, yeah. Right? At Horlack Park. So the first year it came out, at that point, I am a pro skateboarder. I'm a Canadian pro. I've got a board with my name on it. And mm-hmm. if they sell, I do get some money for it. So you're technically a pro. And I'm like, well, uh, they actually have some of the best pros in the world, a part of it. And um, at that point, you know, you're like you're like 31 and have four children. And you're realtoring. And I'm still skating once once or twice a week. But like... Like these dudes, these dudes are pro. every day. These dudes yeah. are pro. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I I do have to enter. Like I'm I'm the pro in the area. So my only goal, honestly, and I said to Jenna, I just want it to be that when people are watching everyone skate, they can't single me out and be like, what the hell is that dude doing here? <laughs> right. That was literally my yeah. goal because I knew the dudes. Ryan Desenzo skating that. Greg Lutzka. I don't know if you guys have heard of Greg Lutzka, but that like, name I, I actually recognize from Lutzka, the skateboarding I had, days. I had posters of Lutzka on my wall. Uh, the guy won like five X Game gold medals. Like Lut- Lutzka was the dude. Lutzka's skating in the contest, right? So you're like, that was pretty surreal. Um, so skated in that contest, made it past <clears throat> quarterfinals, made it past semifinals. Uh, my semifinal run, like the, there was a crowd of like 2,000 people there and like a big, a, 
mega board and, and my wow. ki- my kids are there watching daddy on the mega screen that's awesome right so there i am and hey ben loads from and they're almost like spruce grove <laughs> and the whole audience yeah. is like what the hell yeah <laughs> you know my I, my kids are there and my brother brought i've got four his four nieces and nephews like just a really rich moment and i crushed my semifinals run i landed every trick and mm. like at 31 my bros you are hitting the top of your you feel tired after 40 41 seconds right like <laughs> you'll still press through and kill it but like in your heart you're like i'm dying when you're 22 you're like give me coke let's do this give me some great pop like i can do this for right like it, there is a big difference but it it was such a joy i got ninth in that contest so it's something about the ninth yeah hmm. and they invited me to china so I got to skate the the feast grand oh, final wow. thing out there, and and I mean that was well. This was actually what was crazy. Um, I remember <clears throat> before I entered that feast contest, watching one of their ones in Europe, and watching the finals because they televise it or they they like YouTube televise it, but they got a great following. And I remember watching the finals three weeks before that and seeing these dudes skate and they go through each one of their faces. And they see each one, there's their flag down below. And I remember in my heart being like, man, that's so cool. That I'm not, like, I'm not going to get that. And there I am in Edmonton at the finals. I'm three over from Greg Lutzka. And they got the camera on me. I've got a little thing that says, hi, Tallulah, Petra, Raffiero. Like, just fully uh, embracing that moment. And I'm like, I'm three over from Lutzka. I'm skating in the finals with Lutzka. You know, and... um you know, for me in my life, guys, um, you know, when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, um, I had a lot of opportunities to go to California to pursue the fullness of that career. Mm-hmm. Um, I met Jenna. My greatest goal in life was to meet the, the person I'm going to love forever and love them as long as I can. I really mean it. So I met Jenna. So, like, you put those... California, those things on hold. And mm-hmm. I I have friends that are still crushing it to this day, Sierra Fellers. Shout out Sierra Fellers, Long Beach, <laughs> California. Um, but like me and Sierra were so tight and he won Tampa Am. And like, and that's when we knew each other. So like huh. all those what? connections were there, but to be a dad, to pursue this other path, for it to kind of come full circle at 31 and I get to stand in the finals and skate. I like, I cried. I said to Jenna, you know, it felt like there was this parking spot that was always reserved for me. Yeah. And this week I got to just park my car in there just for one, for one go. Wow. Right. That's yeah. So, it, so, yeah. so my heart's full, right? Absolutely. My heart's so full. And, and this is what's cool is going to China. Um, I get to China at like, well, and even someone on the airplane, like this is your dream growing up as a, as a skater. Hey, so what are you on this airplane for, man? And you're like, uh, I'm a pro skater. That's actually literally why I'm here. I can't even fake that. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you try and come up with reasons when you're younger, mm-hmm. but they're all fake. Yeah. You're not making any money and nobody cares who you, I'm like, I'm <laughs> this time. That is why I'm here. You know, it's like, it's cool. Yeah. And uh, I get to China. It's so late and I don't speak obviously any of the language and I somehow find the bus and it's just Lutzka. And so me and me and Lutzka take the bus to the hotel. Like you're like, God, you God this is so cool. <laughs> right? awesome. And at this point we're just, wow. at this point we're buds. Like you're, yeah. you're doing whatever. I skate the contest. And so now it's so cool. Cause all these dudes I skated with are literally going into the Olympics. Gustavo Ribeiro is one of the best skaters on the planet. And I remember bugging him and his twin brother on the bus and we're skating in the same contest together. Mm. Aikita Desuki was my roommate. Yuto Origami right now is literally one of the... He won three street leagues or mm. two of them. I got at that point where I'm at 31 at the height of my skill. Like, they're just starting. Mm-hmm. But there was this gorgeous merging for a week and a half where, yeah. where God's like, listen, here you go. Just enjoy the fullness of this. You're one of them... For a week, buddy. For a week, <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, and so I came out of that just just my heart being so freaking full, right? Like I, I couldn't ask. That's couldn't so ask cool. Wow, yeah, that's that's really cool, man. That's yeah. an awesome story. Wow. Yeah, and how'd you do at the finals? 
<laughs> just to ruin the story. <laughs> Same story. So, so, oh my gosh, my, <laughs> I bombed. I actually, I didn't even make it to the finals. So here we are, other side of the planet. Yeah. Um, I, I <laughs> so my, my deal is I, if I get excited, I get really stupid. Uh, like I'm like mm. a, I'm like a dog that's like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome, this is so awesome. And then it just starts like biting its leg, and you're like, stop, stop biting your leg. Like, why are you doing that? And the dog's like, I didn't even know I was biting my leg. I was just so excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a table. I thought it was a wooden table. Felt like my leg, but then I just kept biting because I was so excited. <laughs> and yeah. so Jenna knows I'm like that. Like, yeah. and and uh, oh man, so I'm skating in the quarterfinals and in warm up, and I, guys. At this point, I'm so happy in my life. I'm in China. I'm one of these dudes. I'm feeling in the pocket. And I'm crushing warm-ups. Like, I am so one of these yeah. dudes. Like, And I'm, I'm, like, so in the pocket. I love my life. <laughs> and I remember I called Jenna. And I'm like, hey, babe. <sighs> and, like, she, can, she knows me. She's been, she's been married to me for 13 years. She's like, hey, sweetie. I'm like, hey, <sighs> it's going so good. <laughs> like I'm just skating so good, babe. Like I'm so excited. She's like, yeah, um, and I can hear in her voice <laughs> the concern. Yeah, yeah. But like I'm, the dog, I've already started biting my my own leg, yeah. and she can see me biting my own leg. She's like, just you make sure you just keep like take it easy, Benny. Okay. And I remember in my heart, and I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. But in my heart, I'm like. <laughs> I was already too far. I was yeah. already so so here's what happened. My <laughs> my actual run comes. Here's my moment. And this has never happened to me in 20 years of skateboarding. I skated so much that my quads seized up <sighs> mid-run. If you ever go back and look at the footage, I'm punching my quad to try and make it not seize so basically at the start of your run they put you all together and go okay guys cameras are going to start this way um so when you do this when we call your name just go up and do one little trick it's mm -hmm. kind of we introduce you i'm like i'm gonna sprawling of course i'm gonna sprawling that's my signature thing um land it a hundred out of a hundred times but, all right next up is ben Lotz. i go up and try this little sprawling just pile that is the beginning of not even my run. That was my intro to my run. Uh, my leg seized up second <laughs> second trick in. Oh, and I no. just had no, the, no. the crappiest run that you uh. could have had. And it, <laughs> oh, man. You know, <laughs> but I think it's perfect. Honestly, <laughs> right? Like, like the damage as far as contentment and joy was already done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I definitely had to get over feeling like a complete loser for about... 14 hours where sure, you're like sure i've i've left my whole family on the other side of the planet they're all rooting for me everyone i know is rooting for me and i'm biting my own leg <laughs> okay but i i got over it and had some fun so it was good oh good yeah it's all, so, about, it's all about the moment i think yeah, at the end of the day absolutely yeah, yeah like, honestly honestly <clears throat> what would have it achieved like hey Hey boys, nailed eighth place, feast China. <laughs> <laughs> Carry right, like, it, like really, it. yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have made a difference, yeah. right? No, no. So, oh, so wow. yeah. So, I mean, That's really cool, what a man. joy, what a yeah. joy in my life, and and I really don't pull it out skateboarding these days, just uh, simply because I am a nerd, and I talk about skateboard. I can start talking about it the same way, you know, essential oils people. Talk, talk about, about essential, essential oils. oils and you're like your eyes are so glazed over <laughs> yeah, yeah but they're yeah. like they're like thinking that you're hyped because they're reading your smallest nuances because they love it so much <laughs> and right, just keep right. going and and it's like i don't care about essential oils <laughs> shout out to my wife jenna i love doTERRA and all of your essential oils <laughs> sorry sweetie you have a diffuser or <laughs> We have multiple diffusers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Shit. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a lot to, uh, you got to take it in. <laughs> it's a lot to digest, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fun, that's though. I haven't, so cool, man. I haven't been able to, yeah, I just haven't 
been able to talk about that very much. And honestly, frankly, you know, the last the last uh, year or year and a half has just been so wild and busy with real estate that it's it's actually been hard uh, to make time for skateboarding, and wow. I love it. But at the same time, too, I mean, I mean, when you're hitting 34, 35, like you're like, I actually don't really want to jump down a handrail. Yeah, you can uh, hurt yourself. I, I did that a lot, and I love it. Um, but it's like that that thing where you're like, I, if I do this, I will prove something somewhere. Right. And street cred will rain shot. upon yeah, me right? from the teenagers yeah. at the <laughs> skate park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Everybody the, else is 14. And yeah. Yeah, thirty four. Step years. aside. Actually, <laughs> I have this memory about three years ago. Yeah, being at the skate park, and I'm like, I see this like mom, and, I'm, and she's got like two kids with her. And I'm like, oh, like in my brain, I'm like, oh, that's that's nice. That mom, that mom and her kids, and then I'm I'm looking at her kids, and I'm like, her kids are my kids' age. And I'm like, I think I went to school with her. <laughs> <laughs> We're the same age, <laughs> you know, like skateboarder Ben playing. The two worlds kind of colliding. colliding yeah <laughs> but no nah, it's it's so good man such a joy i still watch skate videos like if i have time six minute moments in my day i i will watch skate, skate videos. videos still yeah. like i love it till the day i die it has been a, a joy and a passion and kept me not fat for many years <laughs> which i actually remember the first time the feeling came the thought came probably like 28 your guys' age and never thought this thought before but i'm jumping down a stair set you know and you're just over and over and i remember in my brain i'm like this is amazing cardio and i'm like no <laughs> you will not think that this is skateboarding this is fun <laughs> you know like you're like <laughs> yeah exercise is di- exercise is boring <laughs> when i look back that was the beginning of the end uh, <laughs> yeah this when is, it becomes cardio, yep. it's, yeah. this is excellent cardio. Yeah. This is excellent. Yeah. This is... When anything becomes cardio, it's, <laughs> anything... it's time to take a second look at it, I guess. Honestly. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Um, should we take a quick break here, gentlemen? Sure. Um, no, one of the other one of the other stories I remember was, uh, and you briefly mentioned it, but uh, some sort of, oh, and one thing I was going to say is like maybe extend the arm a little bit. To your right, <laughs> nailing it, perfect. Is this, is this good? <laughs> Hang on, wait. Someone could take a screenshot of this, and it looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I did. No, I'm not gonna say that. Okay, great. How's yeah. how's this? That's perfect. Good, good. Um, no, I was saying. Uh, so we had some social studies project. If my memory serves correct, and maybe you would remember better, but it was. It was some sort of Canadian explorer who was about, and we had to write a song. Yes. And then Josh and I paired up to write a song, <laughs> and we were just apparently so bad <laughs> that <laughs> I remember, and hopefully you remember this, because... Okay. Uh, I've suppressed this memory, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like we were sort of buddies with you as a teacher, <laughs> at <laughs> least in my head, yeah. but uh, <laughs> we... Uh, <laughs> so... Then when you get up there, you're like, uh, all right, I'm going to uh, recreate this song to the level of, like, the quality of these lyrics. And you just start, like, randomly slapping your guitar and, like, yelling <laughs> the words of whatever it was about. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, it crushed. The whole class laughed <laughs> so hard. <laughs> but uh, we apparently, and the funny part was we were in our, like, garage band at the time yeah. and we were the worst lyricists in the whole class apparently <laughs> oh so. my gosh yeah i believe fishermen call that a cluster f yeah that's yeah, yeah. oh dude that's so funny and he told us to play eye of the tiger you taught us how to play it yeah do you remember that yes i do jamming in I mr p's uh, music room yeah. yeah that was with us yes yeah i totally remember that yeah band geeks band that's so band sick guys yeah yeah, that was a great time. I think we had to do, like, everybody had to do a city, and then you were given a song about that city. Was he No, that, that's a different project. I okay. know which project you're talking about. No, yeah. this was, like, it was about an explorer, and we had to write something that kind of told 
Okay. His story. Okay. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> Do you remember doing that? At oh all, yeah. Or just oh, oh no, 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 no. A hundred percent. I I remember. That was actually one of the things where that facilitator came was in there? and watched. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I fully remember that, and it was actually <laughs> so so much yeah. fun. I remember. It may not have been with your class. I had to do a lesson on mercantilism, okay. which is the, the yeah. pro, right trading and so on and so forth. And yep. so I, I uh, decided to divide the classroom in half and we would use uh, paper and crumple it up as the raw material. And that had to get fed along the side, like as people would mine for the material, bring it over here to the manufacturers. The manufacturers would turn those into a- paper airplanes and then they would throw the paper airplanes back over to the other side, which was trading. And that was... So essentially, it was a class full of throwing paper airplanes. Amazing. But uh, I had a lot of fun, man. Like, But I, like I oh, said man, to you... that's awesome. It, 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 I can't tell you how, how much it warms my heart that that you guys actually... Like, you got to think, right? Like, yeah. you're going to be an old 90-year-old fart. Yeah. Uh, shout out to 90-year-old people. Love you. <laughs> you have lived great lives. And um, and you're actually still going to have that memory. You got to think of that, right? To, yeah. to have actually to have real estate in someone's story mm-hmm. is such an honor. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So absolutely. so truly, like listening yeah. to you guys, my heart is like overjoyed and overwhelmed to to know that yeah yeah stuff left an impact. That's awesome. That's a quote. <laughs> and I think. Uh, I think that kind of translates well into what we all do for a living now, right? right? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like that was something that kind of clued in for me maybe like a year or two in where it like really clicked, right? Where it's like, oh, wow, I'm playing a huge part in people's lives Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm helping them buy their first home or sell a home, either way. Um, And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, this is a big bookmark or bookend or whatever, not Mm -hmm. bookend, bookmark of their story. And I have the privilege yes. and responsibility of being an impact of that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I feel the same. You know, it's. Uh, I, I usually say, uh, like, I, I, I'm a part of your life. Like, you're already running. I just come and run, run alongside of you for a very short period of time. All things considered, mm-hmm. but again, it is. It's a very acute role. Yeah. That that is super significant, and they trust you. Mm-hmm that's insane they're all lunatics <laughs> right but but you think of that and and should you should you do more than a transaction you again get and we get to have you guys have all done this there, there are really real moments that happen mm-hmm. that people don't hear about well, I mean, you re- make friends for life absolutely and there, there's really stressful moments that happen where you again have the privilege of being a part of some people's really messy moments. Mm-hmm. And that's that uh those are moments we typically um reserve for for family mm-hmm. or close friends, right? Yeah. And it's very we, very we, private. Yeah, and we get to come in and we're actually invited into that for a three or four month period. It's an honor. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. They well, live in that house forever and they just remember you showing them it and Yeah. yeah. And, well you would hope yeah. <laughs> right or you try yeah. you try right yeah so yeah you said you might have some questions for us well you know my my questions you guys kind of did it i was like what the heck do you remember from me teaching <laughs> yeah like i think those are my three distinct memories was dropping the cards yeah the funny song yeah. and then uh jamming during the lunch That's hour so instead sick. of you know, hanging out behind the school with the cool kids. We were <laughs> playing Eye of the that. Tiger. Smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Did you have any any other than that? You seem a little less memory I remember there was a snowboarding thing. Like we went snowboarding to uh, Rabbit Hill or something. And uh, wow, somebody hit like a jump. I think it was like. Andrew O, if you remember, and just like smoked a jump and like just flew, and you were there and everybody was there. I just remember that. Okay, just, I don't remember that. The uh, the the difference in the two of you as individuals <laughs> is is stark and stunning. <laughs> like like he yeah. he has three eloquent yeah um, very detailed <laughs> stories, and you're like. Yeah, 
There was the this one guy time. jumped. <laughs> and, he like smoked uh, a jump. There was snow. He like, <laughs> he like smoked. He a smoked snow. a jump, man. And this he, is the memory. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy like doesn't know how to ski, and is just going down the hill. His memory and... of me has nothing to do with <laughs> yeah. me. It's some other kid who broke a bone or whatever. I was just, I was just <laughs> and you were just in, there. <laughs> You were definitely there, though. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Ben's like a background character yeah. in a movie, yeah. pretty much at that I, point. I've actually that. somehow meandered into like seven of his other memories, which are not even real. <laughs> You're just like kind of in the back, yeah, because I'm yeah. so vague in that one. It really just translates perfectly <laughs> into like yeah, six yeah. others. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah. yes. So. so, so you're the king of social media, though. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's not it's, again. Not yeah. You have sorry. To... Finish your point. No, no it's just, just gonna... it, again not like how me getting into real estate. It, that was never my aim. Because mm-hmm. I was gonna, if we can back that up a yeah. step. Because I mean, a lot of people know who you are in the greater Edmonton area because of your, your social media, your mm. work, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, you probably weren't. Uh, killing it from day one like it took took a while to get there right yeah about about four years oh really yeah yeah Yeah, i think you know the first year uh, sold seven houses okay yeah i'm with four children yeah like it goes by very fast Mm -hmm. yeah second year i sold 11 so i was like yeah third year sold nine shoot right yeah and and, um and and in that time it's tough too because you 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 actually don't know enough to even find yourself yet. It's it's almost inappropriate to start to establish yourself because you don't actually have experience. Hmm. Interesting. So it's, it's yes. a very yes. right. It, it, yeah. But you but you have to grind. But you have to. But you know you haven't hit your pace and you haven't found your legs yet. Yeah. You're running, but you look horrible. But you are moving forward, and there's no way out of that. Like you have to yeah. suck till you don't suck. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in that sucking period. It's it's hard to although I believe now seven years later it's easier to come right on board and have an Insta page and get some systems going. Um, but people were still faxing stuff seven years ago. I mean, mm-hmm. you, whatever you guys were only in it two yeah. years after me. So. Yeah. Um, but it has changed a lot when I think it, it's of a huge when shift. I think of some norms and yeah. practices in the business and around it yeah. since 2015 to now. Like yeah. it. Five years is a long time, right? But like, you know what? Changes. It, it when I think about it, right back to when I started, uh, authentic sign or docu sign was not around, right? Mm, yeah. um, everything was faxed and social media. I remember sitting around in, in my office, you know, at the meeting table, and just realtors making fun of social media. Hmm. Oh, hmm. like what? What are people gonna look at? What I ate for for lunch? Yeah, his name's at Foodie Realtor Jerk, and he's crushing, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. But like, the, it was, it was, it hadn't emerged it's yet. Foreign, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, and and yeah, it was. Uh, it's all I had, is the best way I can put. It. When I started, that's all I had. So it wasn't a cunning, strategic. I'm gonna become this guy. It was like you said. I wasn't crushing. I have four children. I just bought a new house. We have no money. We've been destitute for 10 years and we need to pay bills. And we're barely doing that. You know, like we had red things on the front of our doorknob because our water wasn't paid. And that was not unnormal for us, right? Mm-hmm. Like we it, we had a really rough 10 years of, of having nothing as I was learning how to not suck in business in general. Right. Shout out, Jen. I love you. Thank you for no. everything you've ever been for me. And, uh, but, but truth, right. It's Mm -hmm. really true. And so for me, when I started, I don't have money to start a stupid $4,000 website from, uh, the brand that every realtor goes to. (laughs) And it's, and it's the, who who shall, right. That's classy. (laughs) That's classy. But, but just in my opinion, right. And even then, you know, I, I didn't know boatloads about marketing, but look at who we are. Look at like you guys are, I know I taught you, but we're all in that same sort of generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just know what's authentic and you know what isn't. You know what's worth looking at and watching and you know what isn't because you feel it. And, I, you know, I, I uh, some marketing just was dumb 
and didn't make sense. And like, why would I pay 4,000 bucks for a website that literally looks like everyone else's website yep. with a different color and mm -hmm. my dumb face, mm -hmm. right? And, and for me, even easier, I do not have $4,000. I'm trying to pay my property taxes so that we stay in our house. All I have is a thousand friends on Facebook. So that's what I'm going to start right. with. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's literally yeah, absolutely. how I became social media guy is if I don't somehow exploit this, we are uh, not going to eat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, it makes so much sense, right? So, so, cause you, uh, you're, you're kind of known for how much your personality comes through on your listing videos is probably, mm -hmm. I'm assuming is a big part of your business. Yeah. Uh, did you like, did you start doing them normally and then change? Or are you like, I'm Ben's low, Ben loads. I'm going to Ben yeah. loads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, thing, right. Um, I'll, I'll backtrack it just very quickly. Um, so before I did my first video, mm -hmm. um, I understood that the, the, the gold standard in our business was what I called crappy acoustic guitar music and panning shots of a house. <laughs> That's literally what I called it. Like when I, Jesse Martineau, who's my, my video guy to this day. Mm -hmm. Shout out Jesse Martineau, <laughs> SG, Spruce Grove, Spruce Village. Love you, Jesse. Um, Sharon, Harold. <laughs> I think I follow him on, on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so I remember saying to Jesse on one of my first listings, just put some crappy acoustic guitar music in and pan the shot. Cause I know we're at least doing that. We're going to be here. Yeah. Um, and we did it and it sucked, but it, whatever, never sold the house either. Um, and after that, uh, I made that fall park crawl video. And I don't know if you guys in Edmonton know about that, but I made a quick video talking about this idea that I had where mm, instead of a, right, pub, right. a pub crawl, it's a park crawl. So instead of drunk people on White Ave, it's families crawling from park to park to park. And I, I heard you talk about this on a different podcast I listened yeah, to. Yeah, so I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, for sure. But that video got 33,000 views in four days on Facebook. I didn't even put it on my business page. Wow. I specifically put it on my personal page to just soft sell it. And mm -hmm. it's more, I'm Ben. I, I live with you guys. People think Spruce Grove is old. I, I love Spruce Grove. Actually, 50% of the population, 50% is between 25 and 36. Holy hmm. smokes. Yes. Really? Spruce wow. Grove is I actually in, would not have guessed that. Incredibly vibrant, incredibly young, and hugely growing each year. So I love I love Spruce Grove. Um so so that to say, my demographic right. saw that video and it got thirty three thousand views organically in three days. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. And that first event had three hundred people come out. Now we've done it four years. I had six hundred people come out last October. And uh and, and so but that was the first video. Hmm. Um, but it wasn't even real estate. It was me. But that's where you saw social media authentically when you're coming from the heart, connect with humans. Mm -hmm. And it completely bypasses the business idea of how you're supposed to do this. Yeah. Because they watched that. I mentioned once in that video for like 12, no, for like four seconds. And if you're thinking about buying or selling, try me. Right? Just really soft sell. And it was like literally four seconds in a three minute video. Mm hmm. And people a year or two years later, you're the you're the fall park crawl guy, realtor. It's like it, it right. You didn't have to do the business pitch. You didn't have to wear the suit. You didn't. You were a likable human that seemed honest, and and you did that as a profession, mm -hmm. right? And so you saw the power of that. So I I f in my floundery three year state of trying to make this work. And it really actually looked worse and worse for us to be honest. And by the end of that third year, we thought we were going to lose our house. Just being super real with you guys. Like, yeah, I crushed it from the start. No, super hard. I think I sold a million dollar house in September and was like, thank you God. Like, okay, now it's working. Didn't sell anything for five months. Right. Like, Ooh. yeah. so, and, and, and it was in that five month period when the park crawl video came up. Oh, really? Right, where that happened. But I still had nothing. So you don't mm -hmm. see any effects of that for another six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a listing, and I was so thankful. Um, Cheryl. <laughs> Shout out Cheryl, Spruce Grove. You're amazing. She, she, it was this nice house that was about 430000 probably a $500,000 $500, house in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And I was so blessed and honored to have a nice product. 
And so in my heart, I'm like, man, I just want to show her I'm hyped, right? Like, I just want to show her I'm thankful. And so I'm like, I'm going to do a video, but I'm not going to do crappy panning shots and acoustic guitar. So Jesse Martineau at the time was doing a vlog every week, kind of like Casey. Nice that, yeah. right? Yeah. Kind, of, kind of like that yeah, in yeah. Jesse's style. And so I remember calling Jesse up and, and uh it was actually it was a solution created out of a problem because jesse had like a gimbal right sort of thing so i'm like jesse we're gonna do this video on this house and i hadn't even figured what we were gonna do but i was actually leaning still towards the acoustic guitar golden standard and he goes i my gimbal broke man like i don't have i can't do that and right there in that moment i was like well you know what man let's do it like your vlogs which are like <laughs> right like yeah, it was all yeah. that stuff and uh and i was like let's do it like that but just put me in it and he was like okay and i find in my life when those serendipitous moments happen mm-hmm. I, I have this even with listings sometimes i have this anticipation in me that something like that's good mm-hmm. right so I actually for like the next two days i was at, i was like i was excited yeah to do this video right and and you don't know what you're embarking upon you don't know what sort of thing you're creating but we did the first video it was two and a half minutes long it was fun and i think something in me knew it hadn't quite been done in our region yet but not in like a i'm gonna fill a spot yeah it was more i want to show cheryl how hyped it was actually all i just want to show her how stoked i am and make her something awesome so i so i put that video out and it got like five thousand organic views and that's before facebook had really? capitalized yeah yeah, yeah. Like, got a ton of organic views and i remember the local realtors from the area that were established for so long roger horluck remax uh preferred choice in spruce grove i remember roger walked into the open house and made fun of me but in a really awesome way because i like awkwardly like laid upwards on the stairs in the video <laughs> Je- <laughs> jesse made me do that but like roger walks into the open house and like lays on the stairs (laughs) and you know it's super playful but it's like but it but it showed that uh it left an impact right and the one thing my brain always does is it notices when uh marks are left Mm -hmm. i may not have meant to leave the mark but i definitely noticed that an impact was left yeah and then and then i'm like well let's why let's look at that so then from that point seeing that there's momentum seeing the value of that that became a norm and then literally from that point just they kept doing it they and they they have a i will never do one the same because it's not how i function that whole teaching thing and and it's not in me to just duplicate it Mm -hmm. to be safe Uh, you know for me my belief is you know if if god created everything his infinite creativity like anything If it's supposed to funnel through me, I can do a new video that's never been done every single time. Mm -hmm. I just have to tap into that, not into my little box of safety. Well, that last video did really well. So if I just do that, it's like I'm actually just tapping into how how does, how you know, in the most simplest terms, how do I feel about this today? You know, I know the raw things about the house, Mm -hmm. but even more so, I'll walk around with my clients and I'll get the feel for the house. I'll ask them what they love about the house. And so for me, it's more a general feeling about it. That's what I carry with me on video day. I carry their heart. I carry that. I tried once to do a video writing stuff down. It was horrific. Hmm. I can't actually know thyself, right? Like I can't function that way. It stifles me. Like, cause it was this big million dollar house. I'm like, okay, I'm going to, why do we do that? Okay. I've never done this before. I'm going to write stuff down because it's <laughs> yeah. so important. I'm, here's the way I've done it for 98% that's worked. And this time, <laughs> I'm going to change everything. Why? Like, So just like it was the worst day. And I'm trying to remember notes Lines. about it. And it's like, so you just throw that out. You're like, you know what? That's, that's not how I function. Yeah. And you were saying before the, the show, you do it all in one take. Yeah. Just like your story you posted. and Absolutely. You yeah. know, because for me, uh, it, even if you actually, I learned this as a clown. And you guys know I was a clown growing <clears throat> up. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't need to get into it. But literally from 6 to 13, I was a clown. Face makeup, all that stuff. And what I learned from my dad, uh, 
was actually it's the moments you screw up and fall that the audience remembers forever mm. so you're actually mm. waiting for yourself to screw up and you have things you're ready to do the moment you fall where he'd teach you if you fall roll out of the fall and then get up and go hey you know <laughs> and so and so my whole upbringing was watching him improvise yeah, yeah. but also watching people's reactions cuz those the unplanned moments and what you do in that little moment are the authentic moments. Right. And people respond to authentic moments because they're authentic. Mm -hmm. And as humans, we just love authenticity because it's actually, it, it's like a sweet nectar that it's hard to, it just feels good to watch it. It just feels good to partake in it. Right. And so that's, Absolutely. so, so on purpose, I, I would actually rather flub it up and not have it right because I'm not trying to do it perfect. I'm sure. trying to be authentic. Yeah, that's awesome. Authenticity is watchable. Authenticity is fun. Uh, there's too many. Like, listen, if you want to go see a perfect product and and all of the details perfectly named and listed out at the right moment, you can actually go find it anywhere you'd like, mm. right? And for me, that's just. It's a that that for me is just such a waste of time because you're just throwing your black rock into a sea of black rocks because all those black rocks say that they're making money, right? And so for me, it's like just like teaching. It's like I can't, I just can't do that because there's more to life. Um, so so the videos took on a life of their own that way, mm. and um, and at this point, just at at the pace of real estate, it really has to be one take. It's like you get that authenticity, you get the details out. Um, we've got a little system for sure where like I can, s and everybody doesn't have this, um, but I can see how I want it to go as I'm driving there, mm -hmm. almost like a director's brain. I can mm -hmm. see, like the, actually, I'll, you know, this next video you guys will see come out. Um, I don't know if you've seen that house I posted recently on Facebook, but it's an acreage with like tin vaulted, ceilings on the inside like it's like the coolest oh, okay. coolest acreage house i've ever listed and <laughs> the video is so what i see in my brain and i say this to jesse and he's so awesome because there's just a synergy there um i'm walking up the drive and i'm like watch this and you got to remember on insta it's about 20 seconds you can see your clip go yeah. before you click on it yeah so you're like watch this and it's just going to be this wicked drone shot coming up on on the front of this A-frame, and then it'll go back to me and be like, now watch this, and it'll be the inside vaulted tin roof, and you're like, whoa, and then I'm like, now watch this, and then it cuts. <laughs> it cuts to like the most let down shot, I, I won't say what it is, <laughs> but like the most let down shot of me and the cameraman doing something, uh, <laughs> and it's gonna be hilarious, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I, I don't know, it, you see that you see the juxtaposition you know that'll be funny you know it'll be funny because it's pushing the edge and when you giggle yourself mm -hmm. you're like okay that'll be good Absolutely. Um, and yeah. then and then you see it so there is sort of a timeline so even when jesse goes to edit them it's really already in order and so we kind of tell the story as we do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and man i'm stoked after five years of working together we can get in and out of a house i don't care how big it is photos video hour 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 and 15 minutes we're in and out and it's like that when you're at a quick pace in business that time is so valuable and for the non-realtors listening that's very good time to <laughs> video and photo a house <laughs> so, yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah and you got to remember too like for for my life i'm still a father of four kids and i still highly yeah. value yes. my family like I'm, I'm not i want that to take an hour i, I actually want to streamline and trim the fat off of everything because i will be a 90 year old fart and lament over the useless time i spent on stuff that i thought mattered hmm. that didn't matter right and I, i'd rather be privy to those things now and trim that mm -hmm. shorten that video stop doing that stupid thing i mean even honestly this year i told jesse i'm getting bored of my videos they're too long Personally, I feel mm. that, you know, and I said, so, you know what, this year, and I'm noticing like the videos are great and they're a great tool and, and they help in the marketing of the home, but they're not the selling piece of the home. Right. They, they might be, but we, as realtors, you barf. This is what I tell my clients. <laughs> we are just master barfers of marketing, right? I'm barfing on MLS. I'm barfing on Insta stories. I'm barfing <laughs> on this post. I'm barfing on a video. And we're all like, you know, and any realtor that's like, I can track and it's going to be no, no. 
you're barfing and you're hoping your barf hits somewhere. <laughs> this is literally the. <laughs> How is this not so funny for you? This is awesome. <laughs> That's because he's like, he's like, I, I feel it. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're well, absolutely right. That's very I, well it, it's put. It's the truth. Yeah. This is what I tell him. And, and it's well intentioned barfing. Yeah, but, that, <laughs> but but it really is. You're just yeah. ah, like in the house. Shutting from the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. our job. And, yeah. and you can say it's sophisticated, but honestly, and this is to anybody listening, con- customer or whatever, we're all hoping. Mm-hmm. We, we're reading the market, reading the prices, putting our barf out there, but we are, you're still hoping. And I don't think there's any realtor that's like, my video sold it, wasn't surprised. No, you're like, wow. Yeah. I mean. It worked. <laughs> Because they all say that, but it's, you got to wonder who, do you really believe that? Or, you know, yeah. behind closed doors, can we be like, oh man, <laughs> good thing my yeah. video barf worked this yeah. time, right? No, like, and, and, you know, and, and for me, it's like, let's put it on the other side of the doors. Like, just like I told those students, I'm a page ahead of you. Yeah. Even in that moment, I remember feeling the class come alongside me when I just dropped all of the uh, assumptions and just laid, No. I'm not this. I'm just mm-hmm. this. You, when you drop all of those things, it's funny. Human natures, they just actually appreciate the honesty and are still like, actually, this house that I'm listing, I came in and told them 750 mm-hmm. And they had another realtor come in and told them quite a bit lower. And, and <laughs> they called me back and, and said, well, we really like you and your authenticity and your passion. Like, this is literally three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, they came in a lot lower, and I just was like, I was like, I started kind of laugh. I was like, oh man, well I'm terrified. And they're like, what's up? I'm like, I've like probably way overvalued. Like, what am I trying to say? I'm not representing to these people that I know everything and I've mm-hmm. got it. I'm doing my best. I've yeah. got a track record that shows that it's working. Mm-hmm. But I don't ever think I have it to the point that another realtor comes in and I'm like, shoot, I. <laughs> I really could have blown this. Yeah, yeah, and, and absolutely. They, and they told me they're like, "Well, actually, we want to list it at six fifty. And I just kind of started giggling. And she's like, "Why are you laughing?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Because I'm sitting in a dream realtor scenario right now, where I've compl- <laughs> and I'm saying this to them. Yeah. I've blown it by overlisting your home by a hundred thousand, and you're telling me that we have to bring it down lower." And they're like, "Yep." I'm like, "That's fantastic. Let's do it." <laughs> you know. That never happens. I know, but yeah. but it's because when I like when I come in and I talk with them, they they already feel like I'm I'm on their team and I'm not trying to angle anything. Mm. Like like to the point that I tell them I'm terrified that I'm the worst realtor ever in this moment. And you know, and even in my CMA, which by the way, I personally hate CMAs. Sitting at a desk, you probably love CMAs <laughs> because you can sit down and you can get your data and, yeah, and get yeah. all the, the numbers. My, guy, my I, wife is like that. I I love and hate them, but okay. that could be a, a whole yeah. different podcast episode. No, that's so, fine. But still, for me, I hate it. Like yeah. it, like um, again, my brain doesn't work that way, and I'd rather stab my face in a pe- with a pen than sit yeah. in front of a computer and try and get my human words into some sort of formal writing form it's like god yeah i see where you're going. it's like absolutely. so hard absolutely it's so, like my writing sounds like how i talk mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> wanna you know there's no apostrophe <laughs> t and, I, and at this point i'm like you're getting wannas all over the place could have like there's yeah and it's like and either in when you write and someone's sitting there in their home reading it it can either they hear you in your voice mm. Or it's like this guy is a complete flake. <laughs> it can, it really yeah. can go. So I, so I would rather know what I think before I show up. But that property was just so unique. Yeah, I had nothing Hard to, to price. compare it yeah. to. Yeah. Um, but but they pulled me back and they yeah. were willing to roll with me. Awesome. So. awesome. And I think that shows how it uh, pays off to just be just be yourself, super authentic. Yeah. So so, uh, and I'm trying not to get too specific, sure. but do you? Uh, when you come to a CMA, do you just kind of show up like, just yeah? I don't even whatever. yeah. I don't even mind this. I don't even mind you being specific. I've yeah. actually never been able to. I've never talked about this stuff. Getting yeah. into the nitty gritty. Um, I I realized when I started, um, I I can't be the suit guy hmm. because the bottom will fall out very quickly, 
because uh, I can't sustain that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't live my life that way. The, the results are spectacular, but it's by me doing it my way, which is yeah. the wanna and the could haves and the barfing and the, it, 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 it's like, I, I can't, I just can't. Right. So, so it's like, I'm not, you know, wearing this to my appointment cause I want you to accept me the way I am. And <laughs> it, it, it's actually, if I try and be suit guy, I'm going to let you down mm -hmm. and I'm going to let me down. And it's really exhausting in my life trying to sustain that i would rather lose the listing and go have a coffee with my wife truly than sustain this thing for three weeks mm -hmm. and and hey ben we thought you knew that it's like no i don't know that and and i've said to my clients um you know i've said i i am busy but beyond that i'm just i can forget things you follow up with me like go ahead like for a showing request I'm not offended by you being like, hey, how did it go? And if you don't hear back from me in four hours, send another message, <laughs> right? And, I'm, and I tell them, I'm not offended by that. In fact, you're helping me. So every mm -hmm. time a client sends a message, whereas I remember when I started, you'd get that message and you'd be like, oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get back to them. And then you're like, oh, and you, how do I, how do I? Me manipulate yeah. some yeah. horror story. I had a story. 900 was, appointments yeah, yeah. this afternoon. Sorry. And you're like, so. yeah, you're on Netflix in your underwear. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, like, oh, sorry, I was saving children. Um, so that's why I didn't get back to you. And it's, and again, right? Like that is, yeah. that is, I, you can't sustain that. And for, again, boys, for me in my life, um, having a, a full blown family, a, a 11, nine, seven, and five year old, the, the ability for wasted time is so much less yeah. you, you just absolutely it, right so so those little things the, the the mental time that it takes to try and even construct a story hurts so so i have Very no true. i have no choice but to just this is this is how it's got to be i'm an idiot but i will sell your house and we'll be friends along the way so when clients text me I, I write, thank you, exclamation mark, let me check. And then I check, right? And it's like, you know, that's the thing about the, this industry is we all got to come in and find our way. It's unfortunate we come in and there is definitely a highway mm -hmm. mm. that yes. we all come in and click to grid. And I felt that when I started as well. But but again, you know, I didn't come into real estate like, I can't wait to be a realtor. My My whole motivation was, I think... God wants me to do this. So I didn't care to click the grid. I felt like I was there for a different reason. And uh, I, I find where I'm at. So for a CMA, to answer your question, I apologize to clients in the middle of my CMA because it's literally just a stream of consciousness verbally coming out of me. That's my CMA. So I walk around the house with them. And the way my brain works is I, I'm listening to them, talking to them. And as I'm walking my brain is taking in their home and then remembering homes I've sold, remembering homes I've walked through from two years, three years, and they just pop in my brain. So I'll literally just, we'll walk through, I'll be like, cool. And then I'll be like, all right, so here's the deal. And I'll start talking to Mark about the market and where we're at. And then even as I'm talking, I'll be like, oh, and this house over here, three blocks over, that sold for this much. They didn't want it to, but I told them they should. And that means this because you have this. And then I'll be like, I'm so sorry. This is this is how I do it. I have to stream of conscience. And, and again, if it's the right connection, no nope, no problem. We get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't mean you can't adjust either. I mean, if if you know someone's like my wife or someone's like like you, I'm not gonna walk in and blast them. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I'm not also gonna represent something I'm not. And so it's kind of a fine line because again, I can't sustain that. I don't have time to sustain that. It's either, you know, if my style doesn't work for you, God bless you guys. Like. Like I can't, uh, and I felt that way even when I didn't have business, just, mm -hmm. just to be clear, right? Like I wasn't, just like I wasn't going to bow to education and become that person. That same thing was in me that like I, I have to in some format be authentic. So my, my favorite CMA is when I walk in and I get to say it all in the moment and they're with me and I nail down a price <laughs> and then I, I get to leave and it was great and and I don't have to go home and do paperwork. Wow. And I straight up tell them. 
I'm like, I hate paperwork. I'm going to hate sitting at this desk at 11 trying to do this. And it's going to be a horrible document that's sent to you. But we can talk about it right now. And, and, and again, that's either authentic or not. Mm-hmm. Like when, mm-hmm. when, when you're a part of that experience with me and I'm rattling 14 houses off at you in a three kilometer radius yeah. out of experience, it is compelling. That's mm-hmm. completely different though. Yeah. Like that's so out of left field and how it's done. I, I love it. Like that's incredible. And if, if you could actually pin down, like you said, within a three kilometer radius, yeah. you know, to heart. Yeah. It's, it's real life experience. Exactly. It, yeah. You know, and, and it's, uh, the motivation to do it in the moment is out of a sheer hate of computers <laughs> and sitting there and, and yeah. no and knowing that whatever i communicate to them on paper no matter what will be 40 percent less effective than me talking to them in person right now there's other people that will actually go actually me going home and typing it is 40 percent more effective mm-hmm. than me doing mm-hmm. this right because sure. again i'm i'm not the standard i am me and i know myself enough that that works for me and you learn that over time yeah right so it's like i i bet that you would actually or uh, like my wife would be the type of person that would make her way through a conversation and be so proud of herself that she wasn't socially awkward for the 40 minutes she'd be like man i got out of there and she, <laughs> yeah. she she couldn't wait to go home and then present something that was a step up right like that would be her wanting to show mm-hmm now here's who I really am. Here's my presentation. And, and that would cause them to feel confident. Mm -hmm. I'm just the opposite of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do things. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 No, that's, uh, I would say I lean more towards the latter personally. Right. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But you have to sometimes tailor it to you do. E- each person, right? You, you really do cuz yeah. sometimes it's a great connection yeah. and you know it's right. Yeah. And 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 so you want to you want to accommodate cuz that's also a, a giving thing to do as well. Mm-hmm. Is um you you do go home and do do your best. It's like a child with crayons in my case <laughs> trying to color in the lines, but you're like 90% is in the lines. So yeah, good enough. Hopefully my personality and the connection we made yeah. Yeah. takes us the rest of the way because this sucks. Frankly, when a, a connection is made, it, it doesn't even matter mm-hmm. at yeah. the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. As soon as you have that connection, that's yeah, that's everything, yeah. right? So Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think uh, – uh, how do I, I want to articulate this uh, properly? Because, well, you even said, and then – you know, I, I, I've never wanted to be like a holier than thou type early on in my career. And even yeah. now where, uh, I don't want to seem like I'm being picky and choosy with clients, but mm-hmm. there's sometimes where it's, um, this is not a fit even yep. remotely. Yep. Right. And, or I can tell, uh, either. <laughs> and, you know, I, yeah. I always entertain the idea cause I come across people and I'm sure everyone has yeah. where you're like, I can sense you're going to be a nightmare client yeah. and Hey, maybe I'm the nightmare. Yeah. Like who the hell knows? Sure. Right? So, 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 yeah, but, uh, you know, you, you can feel that right yeah. away. And then conversely, like the other side is like, it's almost instant. And you're like, you know, I have this one in the bag and then you kind of relax and then you actually provide a way better, you're way better. Absolutely. Presentation, yeah. Right? Yeah. One, so. one of my least favorite things when I started in the industry and was getting my feet wet and finding my stride, I hated I hated walking into appointments with people and because they didn't know who I was and because I didn't know who I was within Mm -hmm. the industry, Mm -hmm. I I had to spend a solid 10 minutes just breaking down barriers uh, latently in conversation to prove to them I'm a normal person. (laughs) Because you walk into their house and they have a belief of who a realtor is. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you represent 30 years of baggage of an industry. Yeah. Uh, whether right you're a realtor one way or another yeah and so it it was so frustrating for me and not for, i didn't I, you know i didn't get in the car I was like ah! right like bring a pillow and scream yeah, it like ryan ryan reynolds in that uh oh, forget it he's like in the car and he's like ah! anyways uh, <laughs> what is that is it the big short or no 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 is it just oh, i can't remember me and jenna watched it on our anniversary shout out to this person um, but, but you know, it's like, it, it was frustrating. Mm-hmm. It, it's tiring, right? You walk in mm-hmm. and, and you know, I'd, I'd have to make some comment about changing my kid's diaper yeah. just to 
I'm a dad. Yeah. Right? Like I'm not I'm not who you think I am. I'm not 30 years of patterns and mm-hmm. crises, right? So it, it does get exhausting and uh I think the joy of videos, the joy of social media, the joy of this medium is you get you you be get you become a part of this smorgasbord of personalities that the consumer gets to choose from in their own right Mm -hmm. and when they pick you they already want you and you don't have you don't have those barriers and that's probably the greatest joy for me actually well Mm -hmm. they they feel and this is what i clued in on video moderately recently admittedly but they do feel like they know you yes uh beforehand yeah well before meeting you or ever having a conversation with you and they're kind of pre-sold to use a salesy term yeah, right but all you have to do at that point is actually just be a good real deliver just actually yeah absolutely right i mean and and i don't know if people fully understand the actual golden value of getting those getting rid of those barriers mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. is to to have someone walk out of a car and they're like coming in to hug you i don't know you dude <laughs> right but it's like that that is such you you have think of that if it takes yeah, you 10 yeah. 15 minutes let's even say it takes you a whole appointment to just feel normal with the person hmm. you've bypassed hours of mental psychological effort to just already connect with people and mm-hmm. and not do all of that like you're saving so much time i think it's such a i it the, yeah. the benefits are like incredible hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I have a lot of notes to write down when I get home after this. Yeah, there's been some hard hitting stuff yeah, here. Yeah, this has been huge, man. This yeah. is awesome. Well, well it's cool. I, um, you know what? I, uh, I, well, I'll give a little shout out if I can. Please. When when will this air? Uh, next week. Next Wednesday. Yes. Cool. So not two days from now. Okay. Nine days from now. Well, if you've listened this far, which I don't know how solid your people are or whatever they all listen all the that's way through. every that's every single, single second <laughs> i watch my facebook videos and you see that thing that's like the watch time <laughs> i mean you just you're just like fetal position by the end it's like <laughs> six people <laughs> <sighs> if any of you have gone this far social media blitz march 31st 5 30 to 7 30 50 bucks I authentically believe that in two hours I can give you about four keys that you are definitely not doing that are so simple that will make you ten to fifteen thousand dollars more. So go onto my Insta, go on to Facebook, it's Eventbrite, sign up for it. There's sixty spots. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Uh this is a course you're yeah. you're doing? Oh wow. Oh yeah. wow. Two hour blitz. No fluff all filler this is a fluff free blitz time is precious yes yeah <laughs> interesting. interesting but but truly authentically yeah. i mean there's there's again as i look at the impact mm-hmm. yeah uh, and it's crazy because my entire business is built off of social media mm-hmm. i to this day still don't have a website and i've never had a website i've had people tell me ben i love everything you're doing but get a website man you know like you, multiple so at this high, point is it you don't want to or you just like it's, having no, the, do, it's do, kind do, of fun you know it feels nice to say that like yeah let's yeah be, let's absolutely. be real yeah, but yeah. but at this point i actually don't need it mm-hmm. i, I mm-hmm. i've built a business around saying to my clients um if i had a website you'd be pulling off of realtor.ca and let's be real you can't stop yourself from going on there so just go on realtor.ca <laughs> You know, and for me, I'm not funneling my clients in that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so there's it's literally not a, not no, source. There's no, no purpose point. for it, right? If we can uh, do a quick callback, though, yeah. uh, you do have a bus bench, or do you have bus benches? I don't have bus benches. Did uh, you at one point? Ne- never, but what I do have, never. I've never. Oh, really? And, and maybe I will be. Again, maybe I, this is constructive memory. I thought I had no, seen one. But, what I, but you did see it probably. I have, if clients have like a fence. And they want like can uh, you show you that? do the big oh one. on the bat like back yeah, of the road so it, or whatever. It's me yeah. going like this, <laughs> and then it says, "Hey, comma this house is for sale." <laughs> and then it says, G- "Give me a call, G I M M E." Oh, that's and it's awesome! Me like this, I love and it. I that's literally, very on brand. I made I made the picture of myself in my living room on my iPhone. <laughs> and then <laughs> use the text off of Insta Stories. 
and then somehow merged it white and i <laughs> i took it to the printing guy in spruce he's like ben this is quite pixelated <laughs> and i'm like yeah but far away you can't tell <laughs> Again, guys, I grew up in a family of 10. We are dirt poor. My whole value system is, listen, just get a sign on the fence. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You know? Uh, so that's probably what you saw. Okay. Now, yeah. I do have this incredible, We in Spruce Grove, now, now I'm going to say it, it has to happen because it's my favorite idea, and I thought of it like three months ago, five months ago. Okay, in the middle of Spruce, and Spruce is, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, a huge billboard. Like, it's huge, and it's three-sided, and it's where everybody meets the biggest intersection. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to do an ad. I think this would be so awesome. Where it's, like, from, like, 1991, where it's, like, the guy at the desk holding the pen. And it's, like, there's a pad, and, like, clearly he was writing something important. But then, like, crane your neck up. So you're, like, looking up at the camera. So it's like that. <laughs> right? Okay, you see it? White background. So I just look like a total goober. And then all it says, so that's on one side, white background. And then on this side, it says, I think all these cars, this just makes me so happy. This ad was really expensive, period. Please call me, period. Please, period. And then just Ben Lotz, the good real estate company, no phone number. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the best ad, like... I just oh my oh man goodness. that's so funny I think it would I be can, wonderful that's that's excellent and that's you know any like textbook marketers out there are listening to this and are like wrong <laughs> <laughs> wrong there, there's an element of I just don't care like there's actually yeah. an element where you're like when I see it yeah I'm gonna laugh and that's worth it and every it's single almost for time your own too. enjoyment yeah. Yeah. yeah you know but what I found is when you do that thing that's true to yourself yeah. You attract like yeah. six people that totally get you. Yeah. Like yeah. they don't, they don't just get you. They're like, ah, and those six people are the people that if you can deliver in a transaction, they rave about you because the story started with that ridiculous ad, and then you actually were a great realtor that crushed it. That six turns into like yeah. so much more, right? So yeah. it's like everything jives and works yeah i already have the title for this episode do so, you yeah are you gonna <laughs> drop it on air or do we have to nope in theory if someone's listened this far they already know <laughs> the name of the episode though <laughs> <laughs> forget those people It's <laughs> <laughs> an amazing point <laughs> it's very meta of you yeah it's <laughs> pretty amazing uh, i love you <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i love me too <laughs> i was talking to the one person that listened to it all the way <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah my thanks mom yeah. <laughs> uh shit well uh we're almost at an hour 40 should we call it an episode i think that was a great point to end on i yeah, think that was fantastic there's so yeah. many points oh seriously so, oh my god uh ben do you want to plug your social media channels and yeah. stuff before we where can people find more yeah, of you yeah just want to give a uh, shout out to sharon gifts and gadgets spruce grove harold vasliff jenna my wife cheryl and uh Tallulah Petra Raffi Arrow, and uh, follow me on social media, or don't, That Real Estate Guy, or Facebook, Ben Lotz Homes. It's literally it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. It was an absolute blast. Boys, thank Amazing. you. Amazing. To you. two of my former students. Yeah. I love you guys. This has been <laughs> fantastic. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks, man.